see, they're so cruel here. They, they, they get you in the middle of the night where they know my past and they know whatever you are. And they tip from upstairs, the water comes down, it's mixed between urine. And they pour it down from the side of the wall and it comes flooding in. You can see the marks here. And with mixed with water and urine, it's the, it makes the whole place smell. You know, and I have to scrub out every night, practically, because of this. It, I need, I lose something like two hours sleep because I scrub the floor, just to get the smell away from the, the outside, you know, and it's really terrible, you know, it's, it's how cruel it is in prison. The tragic increase of young offenders in our society is nowhere more apparent than in a giant local prison like Strangeways. Here, up to 500 are held in what is virtually a prison within a prison. It is known as the BAC, the Borstal Allocation Centre. With its cells, recesses and landings, with its security and discipline, with its regulation clothing, the BAC is in every respect a jail. The only concession made to these young inmates is that they are physically separated from the adult prison and that contact with adult prisoners is kept to a minimum. Among the young offenders are YPs, young prisoners. They are aged usually between 18 and 21. Every year, over 1,000 of them will serve their time here in strange ways. But for the majority of these young men, it is their first taste of prison, for they await their allocation to a borstal. Over 4,000 borstal boys a year will pass through this Victorian jail some of them as young as 14 years of age. A recent report by a group of MPs from all parties has suggested that the placing of such young people in a prison is nothing short of a scandal. This boy is 16 years old. We don't ask a lot of you while we're here. You expect you to keep yourself clean and keep yourself clean. If you have any problems whatsoever, especially you two lads that haven't been in prison before, come and see a member of staff. These other cons will take great delight in sending you the wrong way. You're all doing sentences of 18 months and under. It's highly unlikely that you'll be moved from this prison. You've got to serve most of your sentence, if not all of your sentence, here at Manchester. 17 year old, you've been to a proof school, and you've been to Borstal, and now you're doing a pretty long sentence of 18 months imprisonment. You went to Hindley on your first sentence, the dear Borstal sentence. What did you go to Borstal for? Um, aggravated burglary. Aggravated burglary, and what did you do? Um, well, I went into this house, right, and there was a woman sleeping, but I didn't know it was a woman until I told her. And, um, you know, she woke up and it did disturb me, so I like, got a bottle from the side there and put it over her head. And you got bored, so how old were you? Just turned 16, so. Well, I reckon if you'd have been in front of the courts now at 17, you'd have got at least three years, YP. You were very lucky, like. You are lucky you didn't get charged with robbery there, aren't you? Do you realise how serious that offence were? Well, I didn't realise until I was in Henley and the um, officers there told me what it was like, you know. What about uh, your approved school? You absconded seven times. Why? Well, I just didn't like the system there, you know. And it was, you know, in the countryside and I just wanted to go back to Manchester. Well, you got a chance to abscond from here? 
Well, it's just, there was two, I not But you would otherwise. You would try to get away, yeah? If you were at a boy still now, would you try and run away? Well, well, I couldn't, but if I had a chance, I would. You would go, yeah? Great. So your dad's disowned you. You find yourself in prison. What about your future? Well, I've not thought of it yet, sir. You've got 12 months imprisonment to think about, haven't you? Now you got to get yourself a job, or you got to settle down, or you got to spend the rest of your life coming in prison. You're only 17. 17 year old, and for the last two years, well, in fact, the last two years and the next 12 months, you've got to find yourself locked up. Do you not bother about your freedom? Does it not bother you? It doesn't bother me at all, sir. It doesn't bother you at all, so you're quite prepared to spend the rest of your life in prison. Well, I've been in homes, and, you know, when I was about eight and a half, I got put in homes, you know, and special schools and maladjusted homes and places like that. So, because you've been in homes for all that time, you, you're trying to tell me you can't survive outside, then? Well, I can, yeah, but there's no point in me doing it because I'll start, start nicking again, you know, doing jobs and things like that, so. Well, I can't understand this. You're saying you can survive, yet you're quite prepared to carry on stealing things and come back in prison for the rest of your life. Well, I'm not really bothered, you know. Well, you're not mental or anything like that, are you? You're all right in your head, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I just can't understand that. You're not just using that as an excuse here for this present sentence. Well, what can I say? Mm. Really? Frank Way, the assistant governor in charge of the BAC, starts his daily round. He begins in the workshops. There are two in which electrical equipment is made. More often than not, these workshops are closed through lack of prison officers to supervise them. Morning. Morning. 34, sir. 34. Morning. Jeff, how many did we start with? We started with 35, so one gone's glasses. If there is no work, these young prisoners will stay in their cells for up to 23 hours a day, for no association period where they can mix freely amongst themselves is allowed. Yes, Thank you. Morning. As in the main prison, all letters to fathers, mothers, wives and girlfriends are subject to the scrutiny of the censor. Two busy days. Then we'll come in and we'll find out. Morning, sir. Morning, sir. I'll have to draw it, I'll be. It is, yeah. He's going to get it. Send See, advising, yeah. Send it out, but I'll call him up and tell him about it. Yeah. <laughs> If a young offender is caught shouting at night, fighting, being abusive to an officer, or breaking any one of a number of prison rules, he can find himself placed in the BAC's punishment block. What are those black thumbprints doing in your bowl? You are boot polish, they get, get it subbed off. You've got a dirty line in your jug, get that cleaned out as well. That cup's filthy. If I see a dirty cup down here tomorrow, no doubt you'll be on report. You understand? It's been a lot longer down here. Wicked ideas. What's, what's wrong with him, Mr. Klein? He came down yesterday, sir. He was on rules before that. Yeah, well, he's, he's had a whole day to get his kit sorted out. He's now on his shoes. I want his shoes polishing. What's he come up for? Rule 43. 43, sir. It's about time you came off Rule 43. Well, when you come out of here, I'll take you off. Not before, all right? Good kit this morning. How long have you been down here now? 22 days. When are you going off? Thursday. Thursday. Well, let's hope then that you don't get into any further trouble. All right? And you'll turn your mates up on the wing when it's light down here, and then they won't come. Right.
Whether he is a Borstal boy or a young prisoner, whether he is 15 or 21, he will find himself during the day alone in a cell with just a table and chair and some library books. He will be subject to strict prison rules and will spend an average of 7 to 14 days and nights on punishment. When you do that job, I want the job doing properly. You've got brushes out of line there. It's simple. If you see the lines of these towels, well, you follow the lines of the towels and build up from that point. The round finished, there is the daily allocation of boys to different borstals in the north. The prison hopes that it will take fewer than 10 days to transfer each boy. In fact, it can be much longer, mainly because of the queue for places. Have you any offences involving sex? Arson? Any other violence? Well, look, you're 20 years of age, it's your first time inside. I'm going to check and take a chance with you because you were out on bail and you didn't break the conditions. Hmm? But for goodness sake, leave motorbikes alone in the future. I'll send you to an open borstal. Right? I'll send you to a borstal where there are some older lads where you might get a good job and where you should do quite well there. I'll send you to Hatfield. What do you get borstal for? Yeah, what was the malicious damage then? Bad, sir. What was the malicious damage? Nothing, sir. You got away with that, did you? Sir. What did you do? Just put up in the uh, sir. I see. Now you, you committed arson once and you did 24 hours at the attendance centre. Yes, sir. Well, because of that, I'm going to send you to a closed borstal. Yes, sir. Right, so you're what, 18 years of age? I'll send you to Everthorpe. You should get visits there, all right? Yes, sir. See, now you've got Borstal, 24th of January. What for? Uh, Shoplifting, sir. I see. Now, first time inside, is it? Yes, sir. What's the assault, then, in the past? I got £100 fine for it, sir. And what, tell me about the assault. It was, uh, I got arrested for drunken disorder. I saw him some police cells and started fighting in the police cells. So. Mm -hmm. Now, we understand also that you were in possession of an offensive weapon. And that you had six months imprisonment suspended. Well, because of that, I'm going to send you to a closed borstal. 20 years of age. I say, you've got a question, you know, what sort of society is producing young lads like this, really, who are drifting through society and perhaps becoming far more violent these days? And you've got to trace it back to the parents, the environment, the education, the lack of opportunities in their environment and the lack of opportunity for, for them to get out of the rut and go and live somewhere else in the country and develop a different lifestyle. They're not able to do this, many of them. And so perhaps, you know, they end up in prison. And it's our task to put right, perhaps, in six months, what's been going wrong for 15 or 20, 30 years. Now, is it possible? afternoon for two reasons. First of all, so we can find out something about your educational background and also to tell you about classes which are available to you whilst you're here. You can choose classes each morning and there are various classes. There's maths, English, general studies, art and drama and each morning you rotate. If you're here for long enough, you might be able to take the NORAC examinations in general oral communications, which is coursework and examination work or even the RSA examination in English and maths. And perhaps if you're here for long enough and the right sort of standard, you might even be able to take O-level in English and maths. Pay on classes starts at 90 pence a week, which is about the same as the workshops, and can go at three pence a week if you work hard. And some people on classes now earn one pound 16, which is, which is quite good wages. But it can also decrease, but this doesn't happen very often. 
Now, this is all about the man who won the pools last week, which you all know about, don't you? Do you know how much he won altogether? A million. It wasn't a million, no. No, no, no. Well, it worked out a bit less than that. It was about 800... There are daytime classes for drama, sport, vocational training and remedial English like this one, for literacy is a major problem. Some of the boys even have to cope with physical handicaps. Mike, for example, is a spastic. Yes, now just read the headlines out to me now. Uh, one million pool jackpot. And the other little bit underneath. Yeah. Where about? Beware. Just underneath. Yeah. Aye. Yeah. The other little yeah. bit there, yes. Oh, yeah. I don't drink. Uh, I, don't drink. I don't drink, but I, I, I love a gamble. That sounds like you, doesn't it? Yeah. David and his 45-year-old wife, Jean, an office cleaner, fled from their terraced house in... The average reading age of these young prisoners is 12. As, though, the average maths age is 9. The big double... Was earlier. It, earlier, he con, confined it. I don't think... I don't drink much and I don't smoke, but I've always been a gambler. He spent some of that enough eating his house in Forest Road and bought Jane a car. He does not drive himself and his hobby is watching sport on television. David is not the sort to squander money, says his uncle, Mr Albert Preston. He lives a very simple life. Last night, there is a constant threat of action by prison officers to stop these daytime classes in the prison. They resent even minimal facilities being given to these young offenders when their own children face cuts in education. Thank you, Ken, that's very good. Good evening, education department here. Uh, can you tell me please if any... Evening classes have already been stopped, but the part-time teachers have come in to discover the fate of their jobs. Right, the position is then that there are no classes this evening in either the Borstal or the main prison again. The position further to that is that we have been in consultation with the Home Office, Department P2 in London, with the Governor and with the Education Committee. At the moment I can tell you that you are not going to be given a week's notice. The position is that the Governor wants to keep all classes or all provision for classes as it stands at the moment. That is, that we lay on the unlocking lists, we lay on the facilities, we lay on the teachers. This means, therefore, that teachers will need to come in as usual, really until further notice. The Home Office is quite happy to put up the funds to keep paying you every week. The Education Committee are quite happy at the moment for you to continue to come in every week. And so all I can say to you is, first of all, thank you very much for coming yet again. And secondly, please, will you come back next week? And in the following weeks. Have you ever been in before for any misdemeanor? I have. You have? Yeah. May I ask the um, nature of the Well, it was burglary I've been arrested for. Yes. Yes. I did have possession of drugs charges a couple of times. Yes. There's only well, can smoking I, can, it. Yes. Can I put a question to you? Do you feel that this is wrong? What, the, what I'm doing is wrong. Yeah, before I put over the Jewish angle. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, how did you get involved in it? I mean, if you knew that this was morally wrong to steal from someone, because it's against religion, it's against principles. I mean, even people who are not particularly religious would have a strong sense of morals and ethics to realize that it's wrong to take something which isn't yours. Mm -hmm. Yes? I mean, do you not feel that, does your conscience not prick you at mm -hmm. all? Yeah? 
Well, what was it that caused you? Were you forced into, coerced into it? Yes. Or did you meet up with the wrong people? Uh, because you don't look, to, honestly, to be quite honest with you, you say, don't judge a book by the cover. Well, you seem to be a rational fellow, well-spoken fellow. I couldn't imagine you taking something from my pocket while my back was turned. I found that it's happened sort of, you know, like I had no money and I've been desperate to get money and things like that. Well, I want to assure you there is absolutely, in this 20th century, a sophisticated society in which we are living in in which there's a lot of tolerance, and some people are critical. Maybe some people would be critical of me being as tolerant as I am to you and simply say, now, look, this is wrong. I'm not going to have this anymore. I've... And something like to that effect. But can I simply say this? What would annoy me, and I want you to understand this, I'm making this quite clear, what would upset me if, as a result of my visits to you, that I ever came back in the course of my ministrations to strange ways, and one day, this cell door was open, or another cell door, and I found you there, because that I would find unforgivable. I want to be rendered unemployed. I hope the day will come when the governor will say, Rabbi, not one Jew in strange ways. And then I'll know that my message has got to come home. It's not just simply good enough for me to come to have this chat-chat and say, oh, you're a nice fellow, look after me and be a friend. I have to tell you quite openly, what you have done is wrong, you've got to know it's wrong, and you've got to be determined never to do it again. And then when we can get you to think like that, you're not doing me a favor. Who are you doing a favor? No, myself. Yes, yes, you should start a new life, get married, and bring children to the world. Let the Holy Spirit guide me for whatever happens in my life and the lives of a family and friends. Oh, Lord, help me to bear true for an honest witness today. Lord, I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Roy has had a religious conversion in prison. He believes Christianity is the answer to all his problems. He is isolated for his own protection from other young prisoners for refusing homosexual advances. I accepted Christ about nearly four weeks when I came in here, but I didn't know him, I didn't know him spiritually. I was just like everybody else, going to the communion just to get out myself. But then it came to me because I knew I wanted to be loved and I got down on my knees and I says, if you are there, then come into my life so I can love you, so I can love someone, because I want to love someone. I've always been rejected, I've never been wanted. And that's why I made myself a female, because I wanted someone that I can love, a girl, I suppose, a gentleness of a girl I wanted to love. Will you be gentle to me? And he says, I will be gentle to you, I'll come into your life. If you come to me and say, will you be my Lord? And I said, yes. And he came into my life and he changed me, he took away my feelings of being wanting to be a woman. He says, you what I have created, you're a man. You don't have to be and act like a man in everybody else's eyes. You don't have to be hard, you don't have to be masculine to a point where you're knocking people about because that's what all men do. You've got to be what I make you and what you want to be. You know, and that's what the Lord has shown me, he's come into my life. And, He's shown me love, and he's shown me that he does care, and he's shown me the love I've missed all my life. Did it happen on a particular night or occasion? It, it was a, a, about a week before I had uh, met the Holy Spirit, physically and spiritually. I told my mother I wanted to be a female, and I was going through the operation. She rejected me. She says, I don't want you back. You're going to come out of prison, you've got to collect your female clothes, and you go off to wherever you want. And then I, I broke down in the visiting room and I came back. And I said to the Lord, well, it's come up to a point now, Lord, where, you know, I'm just exactly what I am. Even though I accepted you, I'm exactly what I am. I'm a transsexual, I just want to be a woman, I want to be loved. And I got down on my knees and said, Lord, if you want to love me, come into my life and change me. Take away these feelings I have to prove to me that you are real. And if you take away these feelings, then I'll really love you. And he took away my feelings. We learnt that within three months of release, Roy was back inside for non-payment of fines. What does the future hold for Strangeway's youngest inmates, especially as in this case, where all three young prisoners are brothers? Harry, the eldest at 21, has already been to all the institutions available and is now back serving a sentence for burglary. Nigel, at 18, has already been to detention centre and Borstal, 
and is now doing two years as a young prisoner for robbery and wounding with intent. Chris is only 16, but is already following in his brother's footsteps with his current conviction for stealing cars. He has allowed this last meeting with his brothers as he is due to begin his first sentence as a Borstal boy. Um, but like you said to me, on eight, you're not going to get Borstal, you said. OK, I said I won't go and get Borstal. I'm big-headed, right? You, I'm you getting told looking for getting You said you it. won't go back inside again, but you did. I said you will. I said you'll be in Borstal, you, in a couple of months. Well, everybody, yeah, everybody said we're not good. going back. Yeah, right, Nick and Cars getting away with it for a long time. But then I got caught. Well, with other people, of course, but... All right, you say he'll be back. Will you be back? I'll be back, yeah. I think I will be. That's if I take, you know, take the same road again. Bothered? Yeah, I'm bothered, but, you know, how can you change yourself well, when, when you started off Phoebe there? How can you...? Of course you can change no. yourself. You know what they said, what you want to Phoebe, you're always a Phoebe. So you're already thinking about getting in trouble when you've got nine months to do in Boston? And that's before you get out? No, but... You know, when you've been out a year, if someone come up to you and says, right, I know this house where there's good money in it, you're not going to do it. If you're skinned, you've got no... You're OK, you need some clothes, right? You've not got a job. My mum's not going to buy your clothes, is she? I don't know. My mum's not going to keep look after you with your clothes. She put you up in a nice house. Like that's enough. Yeah, but, say, you, you don't have a job, right? You need money, right? Well, yeah, I mean, what it's you're up gonna to do? me. Anyone can get a job if they want one. Yeah, I'm not going to get a job like you had last time. Uh, it's if you want one. Three days. Well, it don't matter. I mean, look at the... Uh, getting paid 17 qu quid a week, you were just slave labour, wasn't it, a bit? It were, yeah. You pack a job in and you don't like a job, don't you? You don't not, keep it. Not, not many people, like no one likes work. But you've just got to work, you've got you've to go got through it. You've got to have the willpower to go through. Yeah, but well, not then... many... But people like us don't have it, you know? Well, if you, you, if you want to work, you can work. But I don't, I don't think none of us is... The You're the one going off that, though, but what the job centre say and all that, that ain't true for, cos he said to me at an interview, or oh, send him down for an interview, we'll give him a chance. I went down for an interview and they said, I've got someone. Well, they always say that. There's loads of them. There's well, them. then, they, but they, yeah, they said on the phone to the job centre, they'll give you... We always give them a chance to see if they'll go straight. But we don't. Shall we do the rounds? If you're ready. We're ready, yes. We'll get rid of that. Have you got anything on this morning? Not a lot, sir. Just the usual. Mm -hmm. The daily round of the senior medical officer. All too often there appears a Borstal boy or young prisoner for whom suicide offered the only means of escape from his problems and from strange ways. Morning. Salford, aren't you? Yes, sir. According to the local authority. Is that right? 
How come that you uh, have got that reputation? I don't know, sir. Being Holmes. Yeah. I'm Scotty from Holmes. You like running away, do you? Or you don't like stopping? <laughs> Because, I mean, you're what? You're 16 now. Yes, and certainly, uh, you're doing it the hard way, aren't you, really, at your age? What's all this um, wrist business, too? Your wrist, right. When did you do that? Seven, I don't know. Just, just that one. Seven. When did you do that one? Seven, please, sir. Mm -hmm. And they tell me that you did a... Uh, Tried to do something at Risley too. Yeah. What did you do there? Just trying to hang myself there. What was that for? Just didn't like the place. Well, you were giving it a bad reputation, weren't you? Yeah. I mean, that's no way to cure things, is it? You look like a lively lad to me, not one that would go one to do yourself in. You're not serious, are you? Time, sir. It's about time you did. You're 16, you're growing up, aren't you? Start acting like it. Instead of like a kid. People will treat you like a man if you behave like one. It's what you want, isn't it? Okay. Anyway, you've got a sentence to get on with now, haven't you? You're going to get on with it. Good. Okay. I'm 15 and I got put in care of the local authority till I was 18. And then I went to a place, Wood End Assessment Centre, for three weeks. And after the three weeks, I went back to the courts. And the court sentenced me, put me in care for five years till I was 18. And I went back to Wood End Assessment until I went to a, a home which I'm in, which I was in before I come here, Mobley Party School. It's in Cheshire. And I went there, I think it was on the Friday. I stayed there about a week, and then I absconded from there. When I got home, I went straight to our house, got a new set of clothing off my mum, and sat down watching Sally. And about an hour after, the police come, and they searched the house, and I was up in the rafters. And they never found me, cos he's a shoot right up there, right way along, and hide in a little hole. And after they'd gone, my dad had throw a stone on the roof, or shout a dog, and then used to come down, drop down, go down the stairs and have a wash, sit down, have a smoke and watch the teller. How long have you? Well, I was on the run for nearly two years old, nearly two years. Spent most of that time in our house. Spent about 21 months in our house altogether. Police used to come and never found me. Your dad was, was he charged, was he? Or was no. He, suspected of... he was um, arrested for the murder of me because he thought I was dead. No, not seeing me for all that long. And he was arrested again for stolen TVs, but they wasn't stolen. No, they had to bring them back myself. And everyone was laughing because the cops had to bring them back. And then um, one day I went out with my dad. No town. I was going under the arches and I got chased there by one of the coppers in Park Lane. I think it was Ken Roberts. And then I ran and I got away from him. So me and my dad was split from there, and I went back to our house. The cops were there waiting for me. Then I went out with my mate, John Higgins. We went up near um, Albert Park, and we was walking up there. John says, there's a panda car here. It's worse, it's there. So I ran from the panda car, and this copper ran out, running after me, and he caught me. It was Ken Roberts. The black red eye come, took me to the park line, and then I got sent to a three month detention centre from the courts. And then after I come out of there, I went back to Mobley, I absconded, and I was on the run again for about three months. 
It was this time. When I got caught, I got sentenced to Risley Remand Centre. And then, after three weeks there, I went to um, Bexley Square Court. But when I was in there, Risley, I tried to hang myself in the cell. But that didn't work. So then I went to um, the Crescent. I mean, um, the courts. And um, they sent me back to Risley. And when I was in the cell, I ripped a piece of steel off the air ventilation and I slashed my wrist. And the uh, cop was coming and they took me to the hospital. Straight from there, come straight to Strange Ways and allocate for my bar to lay and help, wait for bar so. What's it, what's it been like for you being in a prison for the first time? When you're 15 years old and you're in prison? Yeah, well, it's what? been horrible, really. But I'm in the hospital wing and it's all right up there's bed in the cells. What's going to happen to you? Well, I'm going to Barstow. I'd had to do six months to two years in the Barstow. And then when I come out of Barstow, I'm just going to find a job, find a room, because I'm not going back to my parents when I get out. Because if I go back there, I'll only have more trouble on my path. My mum and dad, and um, see the other kids are gonna start getting put in homes themselves now. Like two twins, they're gonna get put in homes. And them two will have to themselves. So I'm not going home when I get out. Well, I think you've got to think about uh, success rates. It costs about £5,000 to keep a man in prison for a year, or a boy in prison for a year. And when the, the borsal success rate, or your know, young prison success rate, perhaps is about 20 or 25%, which really means that 75% of them are gonna come back inside the system again, you've got the question, you know, is it, is it worth the money? You know, what are we doing to sort of, you know, what are we doing? <laughs>